How's it going boys? My name is Johnny and welcome back to another FNAF news video. I'm pretty sure it hasn't even been a week since our last one, but we have a lot more news to cover. Uh, surprisingly, there's actually been a lot of announcements recently, so we're going to move on with those at the start of the video. And then near the end, we have more unconfirmed news. I'll talk about them a bit more later on. I'm sure you guys already know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Chuck E. Cheese and the possible Dead by Daylight crossover with FNAF. Again, those aren't confirmed yet, and we will go into more detail with those when we get to them. Um, but first, I want to knock out the news that we absolutely 100% know is real, is official, and will be happening. So starting out the episode, we have the official release dates for the sister location console ports. The other day, Click Team put this out confirming that all of the sister location ports will be out on July 10th. All of them except, uh, sadly, the Sony PlayStation 4 European release. They say they're still working on a solid release date for the, uh, the people over in Europe, but sister location will be releasing in Europe for the Switch, uh, in North America for the PS4, and everywhere for Xbox One on July 10th, which is only a week away, so prepare yourselves. Some great news about the Help Wanted uh, Oculus Quest port has risen, and it is very, very exciting. The other week, Oculus tweeted this out. They said, The wait is almost over. Steel Wolf Studios' Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted comes to life on Oculus Quest on July 16th. So finally, after, like they said, over a year of wait, Help Wanted is finally coming to the Oculus Quest, which is going to be really insane. If you guys don't know what the Quest is, it's basically a VR headset that has absolutely no cords. It has no wires going into it. It's just the headset. And so basically, it's a portable VR headset, which is absolutely insane. I'm so happy that, that Help Wanted is being ported to all of these devices that don't require cords, you know, like the Switch, it was on the Switch recently, and now it's coming to the Quest. So you can take Help Wanted basically anywhere pretty soon, you know, whether it be on the Switch, or if you want to experience it in VR, you can play it on the Quest. And speaking about the Help Wanted ports, uh, Steel World tweeted this out the other day. They said, Hi everyone, about the Curse of Dreadbear DLC. It will not release immediately, but it certainly is planned. We wanted to dish out the rest of the ports first before we dive our hands into our beloved DLC. Once everything is up and running, we'll be sure to update you properly in regards to both the Switch and the Quest. So they have not been working on porting uh, Coast of Dreadbear just yet. They want to make sure they have the main game, the base game, fully ported to everything and have it working uh, properly. Uh, before they start porting over Curse of Dreadmail. So once the main game has been ported to all of the platforms, including the upcoming uh, Quest and Xbox platforms, they will start to work on COD. Which is a little disappointing, but I think I think it's perfectly fine. It makes sense, you know? Get the main game up and running, and then, and then they can work on COD. And something else that is pretty exciting that just happened recently is Special Delivery teamed up with Rec Room? I don't think anyone saw this coming. So as far as I'm aware, Rec Room is kind of like a, a chill, just kind of hangout space that you can go into VR and just like chill with friends. And so Special Delivery teamed up with them and they implemented some of the merchandise into Rec Room. I don't really know why they did this, but it happened. They say the gift drops in the Rec Center from 1pm PT on Friday, July 3rd until 11.59pm PT on Sunday, July 3rd. And currently, it is the it is July 3rd, so if you want some of this merchandise, hop into Rec Room. And now this is one of the, um, the speculative <laughs> news that we have going on right now. Someone made a post on the subreddit, uh, pretty recently actually, saying that we need a FNAF cookbook. And Scott just responded with, it's actually a really good idea. I'll email Scholastic. Now we did have some recipes sprinkled into the Freddy Files book. Um, and it was only a few. I think there was the Golden Cupcake and then also like Eggs Benedict. I guess Scott is talking about a full cookbook instead of just little recipes sprinkled here and there because there, there, were, there weren't a lot in this book. I think there was maybe like three or four. So having an actual Freddy Fazbear cookbook would be very interesting because I don't know if they would reuse some recipes in the Freddy Files or if they will just create entirely brand new recipes. Anyways, we don't know if this is fully going to happen, and if it is, it's going to take a long time for Scott to actually make the book, you know, make the recipes, have Scholastic 
go through it and then have it actually be published. So if this is happening, more news in the future, hopefully this happens because that would be very cool and would make a lot of entertaining videos. The Bunny Cole preview is also up now. Um, I have not read through it, but apparently it has some interesting stories to tell. I'm not going to be reading through the entire preview in this video, but I will say the three chapters in this book are Bunny Cole, In the Flesh, and then The Man in Room 1280. I'll put up the, um, the summary of the book up on screen right now. We've already read through it. I believe we've done a whole video on this book already and what the um, description could mean. We uploaded that back in February, so if you missed that, I will link it in the description. As well as the preview. You can go read the preview right now. Something that is exciting, very, very exciting, is that the official title for Fazbear Fights book number seven, yes, book seven, way, way too many Fazbear Fights books, um, but it's called The Breaking Wheel, which is very interesting because apparently we've heard of this Breaking Wheel before. Someone made a post on the Reddit saying Fazbear Fright 7's name was revealed earlier today, the Breaking Wheel. The Breaking Wheel is actually a real torture device that Phineas has in 1.35am. Now I have not read 1.35am, uh, still, I'm still very much behind on the books, which is why there's been no videos about them, but it is very interesting um, how all these stories are starting to connect with each other. I'm sure you guys have all seen the game theory at this point, but it is very interesting that the more these books are released and the more that come out, the more connected they are to each other and now the games too. And based off of game theory, also the original trilogy as well, if you want to accept that theory. So it's going to be very interesting to see what this breaking wheel is all about. Uh, I guess we're going to have to wait and see. Something that just popped back into my mind, a uh, step closer, which is the fifth, fourth? What are we on? <laughs> what book are we on? The fourth Fazbear Fight book. Um, it releases, I believe, on the seventh. I originally said on the seventh. Yep, that's what I said. It's releasing on the seventh. Going back to the breaking wheel for a moment, uh, it does have a description that I do want to read right now. Some things must be learned the hard way. Reed sees an opportunity to teach the school bully not to mess with him, but ends up mangling the lesson. Robert, an exhausted single father, gets a crash course in parenting when he buys a fancy new teddy bear to watch and entertain his young son. Chris, eager to join the science club at school, agrees to undergo a grisly experiment to be accepted. But in the malevolent universe of Five Nights at Freddy's, there's always an education in pain. In this seventh volume, Five Nights at Freddy's creator Scott Cawthon spins three sinister novella-length stories from different corners of his series' canon, featuring cover art from fan-favorite artist Lady Fizzy. Readers beware, this collection of terrifying tales is enough to unsettle even the most hardened Five Nights at Freddy's fans. So, couple things to pick apart. Um, Again, this goes back to my statement. These are getting more and more connected with each of the each of the books, each of the games. It's kind of crazy. Mangling the lesson is an interesting choice of words there. Mangling, the mangle. Robert, an exhausted single father, gets a crash course in parenting when he buys a fancy new teddy bear to watch and entertain his young son. Where have we heard that before? A father figure? buying a teddy bear to watch over his young son. Don't know, oh, wait a second, hmm, Five Nights 4 with psychic friend Fredbear. Chris and the science fair going, you know, undergoing a grisly experiment doesn't immediately ring a bell as, you know, as loud as the other two do, um, but there have been a few experiments in the Five Nights universe before, um, you know, like um, with Remnant and all the stuff that William has done in the past. It's interesting where that one's gonna go because again it doesn't, you know, scream clues like the other two do, but maybe you guys have more thoughts that you can tell me in the comments. I would expect an eighth book to happen, seeing as the first collection of books um, has, you know, the first four, so I would expect the second collection to have four as well. I think he'll stop there. I think Scott will not make any more than eight books. Um, he might. <laughs> He might, but then again, you know, going up to 12 books in a series is kind of insane. Um, especially when you consider the fact that the franchise is about to have more books than it has games. At this point, I'm pretty sure it does. 
if we count all these new books coming into play. No proper cover for the book just yet either, so we're gonna have to wait for more information on that. And that takes us uh, to the more speculative part of the video. We kind of had that before with the um, Scholastic Cookbook, but this is where things truly start to get theorizable. So, I'm sure you guys have all heard the news. Everyone has. I've made a whole video about, uh, you know, Chuck E. Cheese Wii Party game that we played. Um, Chuck E. Cheese is going bankrupt. They're closing, I believe it's 34 locations. Um, but they're not completely closing down just yet. People have been linking this with FNAF so much, saying that Scott should turn these closed pizzerias into a Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Um, and there's also been fake articles going around about how there's been five missing kids and that parents have been smelling um, strange odors coming from the characters, which is just too good to be true. If you guys didn't know, yes, those are fake articles. Don't believe them. There were no missing kids. The animatronics, well, I'm sure they were smelly. Um, that, that whole article is fake. So, sorry, but at the same time, I'm not sorry because I would really hate for five missing kids to actually go missing. There's been a whole uh, petition to change these closed Chuck E. Cheese's into Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, which is kind of ridiculous to think about. Again, that would be awesome, having an actual Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. That would be great, but you gotta think about this. It's really up to Scott, and if Scott does do this, it is going to cost a lot of money. Normally, he does what's best for the community, but when, when you're talking about opening several real-life Freddy Fazbear's Pizzerias, I don't see that happening. Again, it would be great. It would be absolutely fantastic to go inside a Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria and see the characters performing on stage. And no matter how many signatures this petition gets, it is really, in the end, up to Scott whether or not he wants to do this. A bark bark, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I have not checked to see how many people have signed the petition because, again, it doesn't mean anything if Scott doesn't go through with it. It's up to him. I think a amusement park with a FNAF ride is more likely. You know, we had Sally Corp um, create a dark ride for FNAF like a couple years ago, which never got developed, but I think that is more likely. Also, um, Bloomhouse, the people making the, uh, the movie, are apparently in ties with Universal. So maybe if they make a Freddy ride at like Universal Studios, I think, again, that is more likely than an actual Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Something else that is completely up to Scott, um, is the Dead by Daylight crossover with FNAF. I know this has been getting a lot of traction, especially the other day when Darko actually emailed Scott asking if he'd be up for it, um, and Scott, as far as I'm aware, has not replied. This whole idea of FNAF coming into Dead by Daylight has been going on for years. Literal years. And Darko said that, like, five years ago, Scott wasn't going to do it just because he didn't he didn't want to, basically. And now, Scott has been giving out, you know, several companies the ability to make their own FNAF games, use FNAF characters, stuff like that. So the chances of this happening, you know, pretty high. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty high. I think um, both the FNAF community and Dead by Daylight community, which I will say apparently aren't too big of fans of FNAF, so ouch about that. But Anyways, people have mostly agreed that Springtrap would be the, the killer, the hunter, the monster, I don't know what it's called. Um, I will say, going on record, being 100% honest, I have never played Dead by Daylight. I have seen people play it, and I have seen live streams of it, but I've not played myself, so I'm not too familiar with the game. Again, I know a little bit, but not a whole lot. Like, I don't know what Springtrap's abilities would be, because I don't know how balanced those need to be, you know, when compared to other killers and, you know, how fair it is to the actual people trying to repair the generators and escape, I know about that. So if there are actually any people out there who know um, about Dead by Daylight, who know a lot more about it than I do, feel free to leave comments um, telling me, oh, you know, Springtrap's ability could be this, could be that. I think that'd be really nice because, again, I don't really know the game all that well. But having Springtrap in Dead by Daylight would be really cool. Would be really cool. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, that would be awesome. I don't know who they could add as, you know, character skins. So maybe they could have like Elizabeth and uh, Michael, maybe, or like Mike or Jeremy, anyone really. But again, Springtrap in Dead by Daylight would be amazing. But, big but, this is up to Scott, right? I think at this point in time, he's a lot more 
not loose, but more open to share his series with more people, with more companies, you know? Like he gave a license out to um, uh, Illumix and Steel Wool to make those two games, and you know, he gave it out to Blumhouse. So I think he would be more open to do this sort of thing, but again, it's up to him. That's all the news I have uh, for today. I know, it's been a lot, it's been a lot of relatively small things, stuff that we don't necessarily know is going to happen, but we did have a lot, so I wanted to make a video about them. Links to all my sources are always in the description, so if you want to go take a deeper dive into those things, they were down there. So that is all the news for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.